In today's video, I'm gonna show you some amazing methods to improve your logo designs. These methods won't only just improve your logo designs, but they'll also improve your knowledge in graphic design. So whether you're new to logo design, whether you're new to graphic design, or a seasoned veteran in both, then this video will help you. So watch to the end to get as much out of it as possible. Also, hit up Invato Elements, sponsored, link in the description. I'll talk more about how to get amazing resources later. Method number one is this, sketch. When we get a client project, it's so tempting to go to a computer to do all our work inside of Affinity Designer, Adobe Illustrator, Vectinator, whatever program you use. What if I was to tell you, you are severely limiting yourself? You may be thinking, how am I being limited by being on my computer? Well, the answer is that when you constrain yourselves to a pencil and a sketchbook, it frees up your mind to not worry about checking the internet. It frees up the possibilities and the ways of solving a problem on paper. Recently, I've even started not using my iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil because I feel like the softwares that I use are actually adding more to my process, which I don't need. It's actually distracting me from the main problem solving points. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say I am designing a layout for a YouTube thumbnail or even a presentation. Maybe it's a 16 by nine, 1920 by 1080 presentation. I need to come up with some layouts. Now I can either do it straight on the computer or wherever I am, I can first of all, get the foundational parts correct by using the sketch pad. Drawing your layouts easily, not even adding the information, but just drawing them in and blocking them out can actually help you come up with more creative ways to have a layout, which will give you more ways to solve a problem. Now, if you're a logo designer, sketching is even more important because it allows you to repeat and repeat and change and ideate very fast. When we're designing logos, what we don't wanna do is just focus on one direction. We wanna focus on many different directions at the start. We just wanna let our brain do what it wants and get its ideas out. So you will start seeing that you do this rapid prototyping sort of thing, which is bringing out over a hundred different drawings that look terrible until you find something that hits the spot. You look at the designs and you say, yeah, this one works really well. And from there, you can start to refine it even more. Most of the time, if it works on paper when you're drawing it, it works on the computer. You can tell because we're bringing it to its bare bones form when it's on this paper. And when we bring it into Illustrator, that's when we can refine it. This is how we do every logo design. The next method is to draw with basic shapes. Logo design is generally simplistic because companies want you to remember their design and they don't want it to be complicated. The more lines and things happening in a design, the harder and more complicated it is which has a direct correlation with how long you will remember that logo for. But not only that, simplistic shapes can be scaled really well. Using simple shapes can actually help with scalability as we can see small shapes and we sort of see patterns within them, but it also helps with memorability and the ability to draw it. A great test to see whether your logo design really works or not is to get someone to draw it a day later after seeing it. If they can easily draw it, no matter how bad, they've remembered the core components of it. For instance, remember the Apple logo? You could draw that. So how do you stay simple? Well, you use geometric shapes. Logo design is about taking a complicated shape and simplifying it down. It's kind of like taking a zigzag and making it into a straight curve or a straight line. It's taking the details out of it to get the overall image. It's not supposed to look exactly, but it's give the overall image a certain look and feel that when it scales down, it works. The next method is what I call the plunge method. It's where you plunge yourself in to a design on paper and you draw hundreds of ideas. It sounds a bit boring, but what you're gonna do is give yourself a challenge. You're gonna draw those 100 shapes in 100 minutes or less. The idea is to not care about how precise you're being with the design. It's more about getting the ideas onto paper just so they're there and they're not clogging up your mind. So you feel free to think more about other shapes and forms. This method works a lot. And you'll see logo designers like myself with loads of drawings. And the reason why is because our first drawing isn't always the best. That first drawing is just the initial idea that we had. And then we have to work on it and work on it and work on it and change it, find which part of it works and which one doesn't. There are so many 
factors at play. So drawing as many as possible and focusing on the quantity at the start and not the quality is what really defines a good idea. The next method is a method that you already know of that a lot of you don't do. So many times when I see a logo being presented to me on the Reddit or I see it online, it's just the white background or maybe just an image behind the logo. Well, that's not good enough nowadays. The reason being is that a client or someone who you're designing the logo for needs to see the logo in action. How is it going to work? Our job is to take the fantasy and make it more of a reality. We need to bridge that gap for the client for them to know that it works. It could be the best logo in the world, but if the client doesn't know how it works, they may not choose it. Well, how do we do this? You go to Envato Elements down below. They are sponsoring this video because they have over 50 million different design assets for less than $20 a month if you go for the annual subscription and seven days free trial, which is insane. They've also got a license to allow you to use these mockups for your commercial client projects as long as you're subscribed. We use Envato Elements all the time for mockups, fonts, logo animations, which is a big part we like to see how a logo would be animated and sometimes we don't have the time to go through a whole animation so being able to get a template and to quickly throw it up just to show ourselves or even just to show a client a prototype of what it could be saves time and effort when working in a design so if you want to save time and do better visit the link down below okay the next method is hugely important in logo design as well it's called gridding as graphic designers we use grids all the time but not only that architects use them Artists use them as well to create harmony and rhythms, balance, hierarchy, and good proportions. You may have heard of the golden ratio, the golden mean, the Fibonacci sequence. All of these things are like grids and rhythms, right? The same goes for logo design. If we're creating an icon, it's imperative that that icon can be fit on a grid because when we fit an icon onto a grid, we can line things up. By that, we can make sure that each element of the logo fits along the same angle or a similar angle. It's the same thickness and weight and it has good proportions and a grid allows us to do this. Using a grid also means that your design will be infinitely scalable. Well, not infinitely scalable, but it will be quite scalable for large and small. This is even more important in icon designs for UI and UX because our icons are so small that they need to be seen and understood, essentially be legible to the user. So icon designers use grids in order to get that to work. Grids work in graphic design for layouts and I'm gonna make another video about grids if you wanna know more about them. Or you can go and buy this book called Grid Systems, which is the one Essentially, the industry standard. It's what you learn about grids. It's got everything in there that you need. And before I end this video today, the last tip that I want everyone to understand the power of, I made a video and a lot of people didn't watch it because I don't think they took it seriously enough. But if you're a serious designer, you will watch this. Mind mapping. Mind mapping is a verbal to visual communication tool with yourself. It allows you to ideate using words that create connections with other words to create even more nuanced ideas and ways to solve a problem. All the best logo designers that I know ideate through mind maps. And this is just to gain a sort of spectrum of words, adjectives that could help them in their design work and journey. I use MindNode for this. However, there are other apps that you can use or you can just do it on paper. Start by thinking outside of the box and strive to create those connections and you will find yourself coming up with amazing ideas just by writing which is insane if you enjoyed this video press that red subscribe button and share it with those that you think would find this video useful if you've got an idea for a video or even a question just leave it in the comments below thanks for watching and i'll see you next time